Most theories, yes. What a befitting topic for my weekly updates on sporting activities around the world. Why sports theories? It is because we view the various sporting activities from various angles. And as such, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to my weekly sports analysis. The analysis will be conducted on a weekly basis as we view the various sporting activities that would have taken place all over the world. With the particular interests, of course, Zimbabwe, the country where I come from, we will review the goings on in the Zimbabwe Premier Soccer League. We will also look at the English Premier League. We will as well talk about uh, the Malaysian League, where I am currently based. Uh, here and there, we will also uh, look at other African leagues. And it is also my wish that I'll be having quite a number of various uh, sports analysts, you know, to give their views, uh, understandings of uh, the various sporting disciplines in their countries. Well, for today, I definitely have to talk about the big one. The big one in the Zimbabwean uh, soccer. Why the big one in the Zimbabwean soccer? Uh, we have a sleeping giant. Uh, that one, the Chibuku Cup. Yesterday on Sunday, the 30th of November, 2019. Uh, it becomes interesting after four years, four years without a trophy, Highlanders did win the Chibuku Super Cup 2019, 1-0 against Tingezi, courtesy of a Prince Juve goal. But that is not gone without any controversies. Some have even labelled that a ghost goal determined the outcome of the match. Did the goal go in? Did the goal, did the ball cross the line? Let's have a look at the controversial goal. into the last 10 seconds of for the 45 minutes it is the 2019 chibuku super cup sila prince is still going that one hits in the crossbar the referee says it's crossed the line back to our debate did the goal from prince duve cross the line The importance of VAR comes into play, and the earlier the Premier Soccer League invests in VAR, the better. We do not be discussing this uh, as the VAR would have given the answer. But however, in this case, it was the assistant ref and the ref were to determine using their or their uh, eye judgment and as such the ball had to stand but what's your thought what's your thought do you think the ball really crossed the line yes or no uh, take a look at this picture 
and see if ever you can make a judgment. From the picture, it is still 50-50. You can't tell whether the ball crossed the line or not. Take a look, a second look again on the picture and say your thought. We was robbed, cries Ngezi Platinum. Is that true? Your answer is as good as mine. But however, without taking anything away from the controversial goal, the move by Highlanders players uh, and the shot by Prince Duve, it was written goal all over. Maybe that's what could have also, you know, influenced the referee to think it was a goal. The supporters celebrated before even Prince Dume could pull the trigger. What was the sign? What was the signal? Well, I wouldn't want to conclude that the ball crossed the line. Oh, the ball did not cross the line. Uh, but At the end of the day, Highlanders Ibo also took the Chibuku Cup and with it the 225,000 prize money. While East Tingezi Platinum got away with 150,000 and uh, runners up uh, medal. Well, without taking anything away from Gezi Platinum, they really played entertaining football, especially in the second half. And it is unfortunate that Lady Lucky was not on their side. And it ended 1 0. Before I conclude this episode, let me look at uh, the interesting statistics about uh, this game. Firstly, you know, these teams met some three weeks ago and the game ended 1-0 with the Gezi Platinum Stars crying foul again, claiming that Highlanders was given a controversial penalty and uh, their coach, Rodwell Lakama, was on record uh, declaring that this time uh, Gezi Platinum Stars was going to win fairly. But well, look what has happened again after 90 minutes of play. Uh, Gezi Platinum Stars beaten 1-0 and crying foul once more. Uh, their goalkeeper's coach, Cosmas Tano Zulo, also seeing red. Uh, he was given matching orders by the referee, Brighton Chimene. On the other end, uh, Islanders goalkeeper Ariel Svanda did not concede a goal in this edition of the 2019 Chibuku Cup. Uh, This is history, and uh, it is the first time uh, that a goalkeeper or a team plays in the Chibuku Cup and comes out clean. So no goal was scored uh, against Ariel Svan. Remember, on their way to the final, Islanders beat Dynamos 1-0. It also accounted for FC Platinum by three goals to nil, and uh, also beat ZPC Kariba one nil. Also interesting, uh, Prince Mugadafi Juve scored 
in all uh, the matches. He scored against Dynamos. He scored against FC Platinum. He scored against the PC Caripa. And he also determined the outcome of the final. He joins William Manondo of Harare City, who in 2015 also scored in all the editions of the Chibuku uh, Super Cup. Well, I'm also receiving a message from one of the supporters who is saying this has also been mad by Ngezi Platinum for they have never played in such an atmosphere, in such an electric atmosphere. But well, I would say uh, a big applause to Ngezi Platinum. There was no stage fright. They really showed that for real, Madame Buro, uh, and uh, instead they took the game uh, to Highlanders. The Highlanders coach, De Jong, continue to make the waves. Uh, he also gets into history for uh, guiding Boso uh, to their first silverware since 2015. Remember, ever since the arrival of De Jong, Highlanders has been revitalized, and I wonder what he brought with him, I hope it's not Juju from uh, overseas. Ever since he has joined the Islanders, uh, business has not been usual with the Bosso, and they are yet to lose any game. Uh, so Dijon also making history there, and I'm um, yet to check with the statistics whether, no, no, he's not the first foreign coach to win uh, the Chibuku Cup. Uh, I tend to be corrected. I will also revisit the archives and see if ever he's the first foreign, foreign coach or whether it was Mark Harrison with the, with the Harare City. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly there. But in my next edition, I will give you the correct picture whether Dijon is the first foreign coach to lift the Chibuku Super Cup. Well, having said that, yes, Saturday, 30 November 2019, Babafield Stadium in Magumeni in Bulueo was the place to be. What an electric atmosphere it was. What a bumper crowd. I can't remember the last time I saw such a crowd watching a local match. The last time there was such a bumper crowd at uh, Babafield Stadium, it was a match featuring Orlando Pirates and FC Platinum. But well, thank you. Delta Beverages, thank you Premier uh, Soccer League for bringing the final to Bulawayo. It was such electrifying. And for those who did not watch the game, they lost out. Comments and the views, let's continue to interact for the betterment of uh, Zimbabwean football. We now wanted to shift a little bit and also talk about the 2019 Soccer Stars of the Year. Yes, they were chosen online and it shows that we are really moving with time. We are really moving with times, but how reliable is the online voting? Well, I'm one of the people who thought the online voting was meant for every uh, 
soccer fan until I was told the last minute that no voting was strictly for captains, uh, coaches, journalists, and coaches. But it shows that we are really uh, we are in the right direction. And if we continue in this trend, soccer will definitely grow in, the Zim in Zimbabwe. Well, who do you think is going to bang the big one? Who do you think is the 2019 uh, soccer star of the year? Some will tell you that Joel Jostan was of Caps United. Some will say Prince Gaddafi, Dube of Islanders. Others will talk about uh, Kawondera of ZPC, of uh, Triangle. When he said that, will tell you that uh, Ian Nekati was such a, a, a revelation in 2019. What's your thought? What's your thought? Well, that has been the talk. But however, uh, controversies will always go hand in glove with the Zimbabwean soccer. Well, if I had my way, Wellington Tadereira of Black Rhinos has made history. Made history. Uh, he played his heart out. He has been a driving force at Black Rhinos. And he's one guy who I think lit uh, the Premier Soccer League. You know, he has been scoring crucial goals for Black Rhinos, and Black Rhinos is where it is today because of him. It is unfortunate that he is just but an unsung hero, although the national team coaches saw the talent in him, and he was rewarded with the national team call-up and he answered it in style. Uh, he scored his first national team goal in national in <coughs> on his first call up in the national team, and uh, that on its own shows uh, what type of a player he is. And it is not a surprise to see him taking the big one, or maybe being a first or a second runner. That's my thinking. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether you are in agreement with me or not. Still on the uh, soccer stars, the big question has been, and there will always be, why we have one defender, many strikers and midfielders. Yes, it doesn't really show or prove what exactly is happening in our in our Premier League. Why? Because we are having few goals, and as we speak, uh. Augusto, the former chicken in striker with the 14 goals, is most likely to walk away with the golden boot. And uh, it shows that our defenders are really, are really playing well. But how come we don't have much defenders? Uh, on the calendar. Uh, are we biased so much uh, to the strikers and midfielders? But I think it's high time our selectors also, you know, uh, they make a retrospect and see exactly whether uh, 
the strikers and midfielders did really light up the 2019 Premier League. All the defenders played their party, defended very well, conceded very few goals. Defenders will cry foul that no matter how much they defend, they will never be honored. The defenders that quickly come into my mind, Method Manjali of Caps United, Peter Mudua, Highlanders, Jalai from Dynamos, and of course the unsung hero, Bruce Homora of Black Rhinos. Well, come 6 December, the cat will be let out of the bag as the big one will be announced. So will be the coach of the year and the goalkeeper of the year, which uh, I feel it's obvious it will be taken by Ariel Sivanda. While uh, the promising young player, well, July, that is if he's still young, and uh, Andrew Mbeva, the under 20 captain, I think he has really done well uh, to protect uh, Ariel Sivanda. Well, that's it uh, for today. Uh, on sports theories we meet again next week uh, when we take a holistic look at sports around the globe and before i call it quits ladies and gentlemen don't forget to follow on Zimbabwean marvelous Nakamba in Aston Villa colors when Aston Villa clashes against the Manchester United and later uh, they will face Chelsea. From me, it's sport theories. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and hit that button so that you don't lose out on any of my posts stay tuned